Crofty, Liam, thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, want to ask you a bit more about the history of tennis and, and, your, and your memories there. So, Crofty, first of all, with you, what's your first memory as a young fella going at the tennis and to watch Terrace play? Uh, to, to watch Terrace play, I, I would have been um, seeing one of my cousins, actually, um, and I was only a young tucker. Uh, my old man was, uh, took me out and uh, took me out to tennis and, and, and I think it was a nudgy game. Um, and, yeah, obviously that was my first real experience. And until... can you remember the atmosphere, what the atmosphere was like? Yeah, it was always, it was always fairly, fairly special. Um, you know, they draw a fairly significant crowd for, for, for the big games, especially the, the rival, rivalry between uh, Nudgy and Terrace. So, yeah, mate, it was, yeah, straight away it hit home. It was a fairly special place. And uh, my uncles and my, my father all attended Terrace. So it was very you know, natural progression for me that I'll be doing exactly the same thing. Uh, Gilly, what about you, mate? You, what was it like at your first game in the first fifteen in Grade Eleven, um, running out through that terrace tunnel? Yeah, it was. It was something I won't forget. I mean, social rugby is a huge thing, and, and to enjoy it with your mates and with, I guess, the family at the school at the time was was huge. I mean, it's something I won't forget. And Crofty, what about you? The first time that you put on the the red jersey, the terrace red V, um, was that something special and, and holds great memories for you? Obviously, with the first fifteen, absolutely. Um, but I, I think you know, back in junior school, just putting it on for the first time, uh, as I said, it was built up within our family. It's a fairly, uh, it, it was an honour. Before you played uh, in the first fifteen, um, the games probably been probably three o'clock back then. Did you get a chance to go out and look at all the other games, so that the thirteen Bs or the or the fifteen Ds play and watch those early games? Yeah, it comes part of the ritual. Uh, you know, you used to wake up early and. Then, Think about the game, but then you go out there and watch watch the younger guys and and uh, you know be present and, and and support. I think you know experiencing those younger kids playing and and then obviously leading into to the big games day at three o'clock is is all about the build up and the momentum. So yeah, it was fantastic. Well, 1996 in your year you, when you were vice captain, uh, premiership undefeated, first time since Michael Liner's team in 1981. What did that feel like when you got presented the, the trophy at the end of that last game? It was it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. I think, as I said, you know, to come, you know, and, and it, it's all about the story. Like we, we did come from, you know, very much a, a team that, that battled, and and uh, you know, I think we we leveraged off that sort of that sort of maybe the underdog, um, you know, status that we got given. But what about one of the most important games? Would have been the Nudgee game uh, yeah. at Tennyson. Uh, what are your memories of that game and the atmosphere at tennis and that day against Nudgee? Yeah, it's it's it is always it's the biggest game. It's it's a Queensland New South Wales game. Terrace's season's very much judged on. So, um, but it was fantastic. You know, we're at we're at Tennyson. Um, we hadn't been Nudgee in such a long period of time, and uh, my all my years and and uh, from year five through, uh, I think you know we only came close to Nudgee once a draw. I think it was. So for, to go out there and, and to have, you know, and always I'd been supporting for those nudging games, to be out there on the field and, and uh, experience, you know, the, the, you know, the atmosphere and, and, and the build-up was, was absolutely phenomenal. And to come out there and, and, and obviously come away with the victory was, you know, something that I'll, I'll never forget. So, Liam, what about you? You've had some great memories with the, the Wallabies in your early part of your career and also the Queensland Reds. But going back to your memories at Tennyson, what's your favourite memory as a young fellow watching um, the first 15 play or a game that you played in at tennis with the atmosphere there? Uh, it, it would have to be one of my late playing days. Um, I think it would have been the, the second last game that I ever played for Terrace. Um, I led the side out against Grammar and, uh, and I mean the atmosphere was great. We, uh, we got straight into it and we put 50 on it. And I mean, I guess the feeling's the exact same that Crofty shared. I mean, to share it with a special bunch, bunch of blokes and then to, to share it with the school. Um, afterwards, singing the song, having Hundreds of school kids there, having your families there was uh, was a huge thing, and it's something you won't forget. I mean, not only to share a, a victory, um, but I guess to take in everything that's special about Tennyson and and I guess what it was on that day was uh, was a huge thing. And I think to be successful is one thing, but to enjoy it is another. And I think we did both, and uh, and that's something I certainly won't forget about Tennyson. So Crofty, what about your favourite memory of Tennyson? Um, whether it was you playing in the first fifteen or you just watching as a young fellow? It was. Yeah. Terrace Nudgy, my final year. Um, you know, we only we only scraped through with a a, a close win. Um, but I, I think the, the greatest memory was the final seconds of the game, um, and obviously the, the celebrations. And then the school, like the school runs on. The, you know, the, 
the school song is sung. You know, it, it's just a, it's just a really really special moment. And uh, if you could, you know, it'd be great if you could just freeze or capture those moments for uh, to reflect on in future future years. But you know, that to be shared that with a with a, with a you know, very sp special bunch of fellows mm. and uh, and obviously with all your, your schoolmates is um, something you never forget. I reckon. Liam, uh, in your final year, you played Queensland Schoolboys uh, and also joined an elite group for playing for the Australian Schoolboys. I think you were tour captain. Um, what was your memories of that and you know, being able to play at Terrace and then having the opportunity to play for the Queensland Schoolboys and Australian Schoolboys? It was a huge honour. I mean, it was the first time that, that I did get to represent, I guess, my state and my country. And, uh, and that's, that's a huge, huge mm. thing at the time. Um, I still take a lot of pride out of the, my final year at, at school and, uh, and what came from it. So um, I think my team that I went through was, was the inverse of Crofty. I mean, we were outstanding, 13s, 14s and 15s, and then kind of faded away. Uh, for, the, for the two first 15 years. So I guess to ride off the back of that and then to represent Queensland and, uh, and be successful at that and then successful again for Australia was, mm. was a huge thing. It's still something I'm very proud of. Mm. Uh, you were a vice captain in your final year at, at Terrace. Um, how, how much is that leadership then taking you on to show leadership on the sporting field and how important is um, the value of sport at Terrace? Uh, it teaches you a lot. I mean, the, the way that you do, I guess, present yourself and... and I guess have a leadership role. It's uh, it's huge, and I think it does directly rub off into a sporting context. Um, I mean, to be looked at as a leader uh, at the school, let alone within the fifteen or 20, 22 blokes that you're that you're going to, to battle against, is uh, is a huge thing, and it does teach you a lot. I mean, it was uh, it was a hard lesson, uh, and it was it's something that I guess you jump into at, at short notice and uh, and try to try to lead around twelve hundred. Mm. Uh, young young boys is is pretty tough, um, but no, I, I loved it, and uh, and I think it's had a huge impact on me. I worked directly with Peter Chapman, and uh, I had a great time. I mean, we both learnt, I think, pretty hard lessons off each other, and uh, and I guess it's pushed us both in the right direction. A lot of old boys talk about the terrorist spirit, and also the kids at the school talk about how strong that terrorist spirit is. Um, have you learnt more about and appreciate that terrorist spirit since you've left the school? Yeah, I have. Um, it, it, it's a, it, it is amazing the, the impact I think this school has on people uh, at the time, but also as time goes on. You know, just the, the memories we shared, but the bond post uh, post terrace has only grown grown stronger. And uh, you know, the mention of of anything to do with the school, you know, the, the, the passion and the excitement that you know, you know, each one of them lights up. You know, it's unbelievable, and and that continues and. Uh, you know, we all still ideally wish all, all our kids will, will attend here in, in years to come. So it never dies, mate. You know, it, gets, it gets stronger. What makes Tennyson so special, Crofty, and how important is the terrace tradition looking to build the grandstand, um, being available for the, the first 15 games? How important is that tradition to, to go forth? Yeah, it's, it's extremely important uh, to the school, to, to the old boys, to the current students. It's, um, I mean... It, all things sport very much resides around around that location. Um, you know, I rode out there. Um, you know, athletics, rugby. You know, I was one of those blokes who pretty much tried to participate in everything, and uh, and it was always based around that area, of Tennyson. Um, uh, the moments we've shared as as mates, as as a school. You know, so it 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 means a huge amount, and it's got to grow. It will it, it will evolve and. And it's exciting, the, the, the plans. You know, I look forward to the day where I return and potentially, ideally, with, with my son or the likes and, and, you know, I can showcase, you know, the memories I had there and, and uh, share, hopefully, within them. You might better sit in your seat that you purchased. Potentially. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I have purchased a seat and I've, I've put... Um, my father's name on it and my yeah. name on it, and uh, both our years. So, and 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 you know that that in itself to own a bit of Tennyson mm. to own, oh, no one can own it, but to own a bit of Tennyson would you know is 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 pretty special. And yeah. and I'll be showing my kids that, and uh, you know we when it's all constructed, I'll take Dad out there and sit down and hopefully watch a good game of footy. I think Tennyson's a special place for for everyone that I think partakes in terrace sport. I mean. Like Crofty was saying, athletics, rowing, rugby, uh, it's all based out of tennis and I think it holds 
I guess, a special part of the start of, of any sporting career for, uh, for anybody that goes through terror. So to get back there is, is huge. And to get back and to watch, I mean, the younger grades play, the, the little kids running around and just enjoying it, it's, uh, it's great to watch. So to have, a, to have the plans and the, and the stadium coming, coming through is, is huge. And I guess to build that atmosphere is, uh, is a huge thing. I think we still get a kick out of watching or hearing that, that Terrace went and, uh, and putting flack on the other GPS blokes that we play with. So, I mean, it, it's a great thing to hear. And, and I think to build Terrace and to build, to build Terrace mm. sport, it'll, uh, it'll go a long way. Mm. Um, Gilly, what, what were the values you learned out of Terrace and playing in, uh, right throughout Terrace sport uh, that you've taken now um, to where you are playing for the Wallabies? Uh, I think just to appreciate the moment that you've got. I mean... At the time, it's it's all it's all a lot going on, and uh, and I, and I loved it. I mean, I look back now, and and I really appreciate not only the people that I played with, but I guess the time that people put into to schoolboy rugby and, and everything that goes with it. And I think I do miss it. I'd love to go back and, and have a run in the red and black. Um, but hopefully, uh, hopefully from now on, we'll go back and sit in our seats and uh, and watch it from the grandstand and enjoy. I guess Terrace hopefully being successful. Um, Crofty, yeah. What what values did you learn out of Terrace Sport? that took you to play for, you know, Brothers, Queensland Reds and the Wallabies? I think uh, Liam touched on it. I think humility is a big one. Um, you know, I think, you know, Terrace helped develop me. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that is fundamentally one of the most important values that, that can be instilled in, in any sort of Terrace graduate. Mm. And I think it's, it's very evident in most of them. So... Um, that and probably work ethic, you know, those those two things, you know, we always got pushed harder and further to, to achieve and, you know, we we're always very much um, anything we wanted, we could be achieved if mm. if we worked towards it. Like there's nothing that, you know, Terrace provided us with every, you know, every opportunity to, to succeed. So, uh, and we're for, for that I'm eternally grateful and, and very fortunate. So it's, it's very much you know, made me or shaped the, the guy I am today. Now Liam and David have chosen to honour their time at Terrace by purchasing a seat in the exciting new Grandstand project as part of the Tennyson campaign led by the Gregory Terrace Foundation.